Justice Chies Verma, who headed the government appointed three member panel that led to changes in laws which dealt with crimes against women, died of multiple organ failure at a Gurgaon hospital last evening. He was eight years old. Appointed as the 27th Chief Justice of India, he was the face of judicial activism in the 1990s. Justice Verma was known for the landmark Vishakha ruling, the basis for the law on sexual harassment put in place many, many years later. He was also the first chairperson of the News Broadcasting Standards Authority. He was the architect of a report instrumental in shaping a new, stronger anti-rape law in the country. At a time when the Delhi gang rape united an entire nation in shock and rage, Justice J.S. Verma's panel came up with a blueprint for stronger laws against rape that tried to address violence against women at many levels. Well, we thought this was Speaking on NDTV's Your Call show duty. after submitting the report in sure record time, just 29 days, Justice Varma challenged the government to hold up its end of the bargain. Because of course electoral reforms we know have been pending since 2000 and, yes. uh, and for the former election commissioners I made this point again and again. Do you hope when you say that it can happen in the budget session, do you think electoral reforms can happen by the budget session? Well, I, I look at it this way. I mean, the time for which it has been spoken for that I can say soon after my retirement the first I think uh, I wrote an article which was published in the Indian Express on the 10th of March 1998 mm -hmm. the title was democracy without choice I touched this then I had given a lecture later the same year or maybe in 1999 K. Hanumantaya memorial lecture in which I had talked of electoral not only I so many others have been talking so it is nothing new and I, I have no reason to doubt that enough thought has already gone into it. And just one thing apart from everything else, if we without any in infrastructure or might of the government which it has in 29 days after being taken by surprise on the 23rd December afternoon getting a call from Chidambaram. If we could gear up, you see, a bunch of youngsters to help us and perform this exercise in 29 days, the government with all its might and infrastructure, if it can't do that, I think it would be uh, something which it would be exposing itself uh, to the criticism of lack of capacity to govern. But Justice Varma's first landmark judgment for women's rights came in the famous Vishakha case of 1997, when the Supreme Court bench, headed by him, laid down guidelines to prevent harassment of women at work. The Verma bench observed that sexual harassment at work violates a woman's right to equality at the workplace and thus violated her constitutional rights. In an outstanding legal career spanning five decades, Justice Verma is credited with several significant judgments. In the Ayodhya land dispute, he ruled that acquiring the property of a mosque did not constitute an abridgment of a Muslim's right to freedom of religious belief and practice. In 1996, while setting aside the Bombay High Court verdict, scrapping the election of Shiv Sena leader Manohar Joshi to the Maharashtra Assembly, he said Hindutva depicted a way of life which cannot be assumed to mean and be equated with narrow, fundamentalist Hindu religious bigotry. As Chief Justice of India, Justice Verma heard the Jain Hawala case in which it was held that notings in the diary containing initials of some people does not amount to a piece of evidence. Justice Verma did not hesitate to turn the mirror on his own fraternity when he favoured a separate mechanism to make High Court and Supreme Court judges accountable for misconduct. Justice Verma also served as Chief of the National Human Rights Commission and the first head of the News Broadcasting Standards Authority. As tributes poured in after news of his death, words of praise came even from people who had faced his criticism in the past. The Prime Minister said he would miss his generous advice and guidance on matters of public importance. The two had met just days ago at NDTV's Indian of the Year when Justice Verma's panel was honoured with the Justice for Women Award. Our duty is to ensure that this remains sustained. And I do hope, as Mr. Prime Minister promised when I wrote the letter to him along with the report, that they will ensure that all that needs to be done will be done 
not only to cure these aberrations when they happen, punish the people when offenses are committed, but to ensure that they are prevented. 